All right, it's time now to check in with our media partners from thevoiceofoc.org for an update on what's happening this week in Orange County government and politics. Here to talk about issues in the news right now, we welcome the editor-in-chief for Voice of OC, Norberto Santana. Nice to have you with us, Norberto. And Anne, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. We've got a question right, right away, <clears throat> something I'm going to point out. It's not often that you hear Supervisor Janet Wynn, the FBI, mention this in, this in the same breath. What's going on? This week we broke a story that the uh, FBI uh, has been looking into uh, uh, Supervisor Janet Wynn's uh, connections to county contractors. Uh, apparently uh, over the holidays, uh, uh, FBI agents were talking to me uh, several county vendors and others connected to county government, asking some hard questions about the supervisor's uh, fundraising activities. She's one of the best fundraisers on the board, uh, raising some very interesting issues about her interactions with vendors. She told us that she had indeed in 2010 as chairperson of the board reached out to vendors and asked them questions about how the county procurement process was working, but she uh, stressed that she didn't do anything improper. There's a lot of uh, things that go on when you're talking about campaign contributions, uh, many of which are, are not illegal. Uh, at what point do you say if the FBI is checking her out, there might be some gray areas here that we need to look at further? It's a great, it's a great point. Uh, a lot of campaign contributions, the way that we have decided to finance our uh, campaigns in the United States raises some troubling questions about the nexus between those that are seeking things out of government and the elected officials that at the same time have to ask those very same interests to fundraise for them in order for them to stay in office. Uh, what it does is it puts uh, many vendors that do business with government in an odd position where they get a phone call from someone seeking a contribution. Now, all of that is legal. Again, that is the sort of dark underbelly of our political system and the way it is financed. Uh, I think the main point there is, is what you cannot do as an elected official is what they call a quid pro quo, is ask someone for a contribution and tie that to an official action. What's kind of concerning uh, to citizens in general is that you can do an awful lot before you get to that point, mm -hmm. and all of that is legal. Yeah. I explain how that works, just uh, kind of an example. Well, sure. Uh, you will see uh, many instances. Uh, I'm hearing this week there's a fundraiser in Dana Point uh, for uh, several supervisors. Many of these county uh, vendors and others are called to these fundraisers. They are usually organized by lobbyists who in many cases bundle contributions from lots of different people. Uh, if you go through campaign disclosures, which are very hard to read, uh, you'll see all kinds of things. People's mothers-in-law and fathers-in-law, unemployed people, uh, people's kids sometimes donated to campaigns. Again, all perfectly legal. What it really underscores is the difference here is that we as citizens have to really police our government and there's a lot that can happen before someone like the FBI can really do anything but the nexus between money and politics is one that citizens have to keep in mind. Right. Let's move on to the city of Fullerton. Supervisor uh, Nelson is facing a lot of pushback from residents in Fullerton th over a planned year-round homeless shelter that he has going in there. How is that how's that working out for him? <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's turning into the battle of his life. Uh, while this conservative Republican is typically used to squaring off against uh, liberal Democrats, uh, uh, union members, and others. Uh, in this case, he finds himself squaring up against his own community. In Fullerton, he's proposing a homeless shelter, a year-round site, one of the first in Orange County's uh, history. And what he is confronting up against is many of the stereotypes in Fullerton and other cities about concerns about where to put the homeless. Uh, the difference here in this politician's life is that for once, he is standing up or in saying basically, if not here, then you suggest where. Mm. Uh, he spoke to us earlier this week and in drawing a contrast between the realities and the stereotypes of who many of the homeless are in the community, Nelson shared a story he had heard about some PTA moms who were talking about their own concerns over the type of people that might end up at a shelter. The homeless. Mm -hmm. And one of the mothers in the group looked up to the rest and said, you know I'm homeless, right? And it was like, took them all. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, one of your own. These aren't the muggers and the, you know, the villains and, I mean, it's easy to portray that if you want to scare everybody, but if you go to these sites, that's, that's not who's there. These are beaten people. It just is. What's your sense of uh, and the next step here is that uh, Nelson says anybody that's got a concern in Fullerton has until about June to come up with a different idea because in June the escrow closes for the site at uh, State College where they will move forward. Okay. Uh, 
This is a different topic. Metrolink. Yes. Okay, let's talk a little bit about that. OCTA leaders are scrutinizing the $600 million rail agency after an audit found some interesting discrepancies. Talk a little bit about what they found. <laughs> well, the new CEO, Michael DiPaolo, got a very uh, rude uh, 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 greeting this week at uh, the Orange County Transportation Authority where many of the uh, board members had scathing questions for him about an audit that showed huge mismanagement of funds and in some cases just bad management where one-page summaries summarized million-dollar contracts. Uh, as what's been a recent debate in Orange County, which is to go its own. Some of the directors are even talking about forming their own transportation agency and breaking off from Metrolink if the situation doesn't get fixed. Wow. Okay, Norberto, thank you so much. Voiceofoc.org is the website. Folks can get more information about all things political happening here in Orange County. Thanks, Norberto. We'll see you next time. Thanks.